Hi, welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA is made up of women entrepreneurs from the Pioneer Valley. We have a membership of over 100 women. The women that you will see in this program are all members of the WBOA, and they're all excited to share with you their knowledge and expertise. So sit back and relax and let them wow you with their willingness to share. I'm Kim Shagnon, owner of Kim's Upholstery, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Carlene Hoffman with The Clutter Doctor, and we are so excited to present to you today our financial experts, Ms. Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial and Ms. Freda Brown from Divorce Financial Services. Welcome, ladies. Hello. So great to have you. Thank you. So Susan, can you tell us the importance about planning for Social Security during your retirement? Yes. Well, Social Security is an important part of your retirement. So when you're getting ready to retire or getting ready to take Social Security, you want to sit down, look at both your distributions, your pet pensions, um, everything that you're going to get income from, and then decide when you're going to start Social Security. The earliest you can start Social Security is 62, and your full retirement age for most people, which means you'll get a higher benefit, is age 66, and the longest you can wait is till age 70. And every year that you do wait to claim Social Security, it increases by 8%. So between 62 and 63, you'd get an increase of 8% just waiting that one year's Correct, time. yes. Oh. Absolutely. So Susan, how does one go about claiming Social Security? Okay, well you can claim online, which is Social Security encourages you to do that, or you can actually go to the Social Security office and claim there. Okay, and is there any um, documentation that I need to have handy when I go to fill those forms out? Well, usually or often they will ask for a W-2 or possibly a birth certificate just for identification. So Susan, if someone starts uh, collecting their Social Security at let's say 63 and they want to continue to work part-time, is that something that is an option for them? And how does well, that affect what they get? It is an option, but it does affect what they get. So you will have um, a penalty depending on how much income that you do make, and I think Freda can tell us a little bit more about what the limits are and how much income you can claim. Well, actually, there's two penalties that you have if you're still oh. working, and what, one is you're reducing the amount of your Social Security by the dollars that you earn, so it's $2 for $1, is that correct? Yeah. So two dollars for every $2 in regular income you, you earn, you have to give back a dollar of your Social Security, so you're cutting that back right away. Tax side, size-wise, you have income coming in, and Social Security is taxable if your income and you're single is over $25,000. It is taxable if you are married and your income is over $35,000. So what happens, and it could be anywhere from half the amount of your Social Security being taxable or half the difference of a, a certain formula or up to 80 percent of your Social Security being taxable to you. So it's a good idea to check with your tax advisor to see if it's a good idea to start taking Social Security at 62. So at what age could you start taking Social Security and keep a part-time job and not have that affect your Social Security or does that not happen? That would be age 66. Okay. So at age 66 you would be able to make as much as you want. There wouldn't be any um, penalties on how much you make. So but if you made it still may be taxable. So you don't lose any of your Social Security, but it still may be taxable depending on the other income that you have coming in. And if you're taking money out of your 401k or your IRAs or you have a, another pension of some sort, that will all, it's all part of how much income you have to make that Social Security taxable. So they look at the total dollar figure you're saying. Right, so if you retire, okay but your, your spouse doesn't, mm -hmm. your, your, your Social Security is going to be The combined income. Yep. Okay. So I think that goes back to what we were mentioning at the very beginning. It's important to really sit down and look at what other income you have, pensions from rents, 
and just coordinate it with both how much you're going to end up with Social Security, how it's taxed, instead of just jumping right into it and mm. saying, okay, now I'm 62, I should just go and collect. What is the best age to start collecting, or is it really a huge variable based on that person's life and income? Well, I think it's individualized. Is so it? for every person, it could be different. And again, that goes back to sitting at, sitting down and putting it on paper. But if you can wait till full retirement age, then you'll get your full benefit. And the reduction that you get at 62 is permanent. So you want to really make sure that you need the money and that you can't wait till 66. So, if, so let's just give them an example. Say at, at your permanent retirement age or your um, at 66, you get $2,000 a month in Social Security. If that's my base, what would I get at 62 if I retired, if I retired and started taking it at 62? 1500 1500 so a $500 difference each month. Um, for waiting another for the rest four of your, years. For right. waiting another right. four years, and that's for the rest of your life. Once you're there, you can't change it and say, oh, I want to go back and change Correct. it. Yes. So then from 66 to 70, it then would go up roughly another 500, correct? Right, it'd be approximately 2,600. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't makes be a big difference. Because yeah. you're still using that percentage, yeah. Okay. Right, so, so it's still increasing by 8%. So I always say to my clients, it's important to think about what else you have in investments, because sometimes they want to take Social Security first. So you should look at your other investments. Are they guaranteed to make 8%? Mm -hmm. So you want to really do those comparisons before you just jump into taking the Social Security. Another thing that's important too is that um, a lot of people are not aware that you can collect on your spouse. So um, you would have your spouse would have to collect first. And what I mean by that is sometimes people think they can only collect on their own benefits, but you can collect on your spouse's benefits too. And you would get 50% of whatever their benefit is. So obviously if that was more than yours, you would wanna do that. And for that to happen, your spouse already has to be collecting. So you can't just go and collect on your spouse unless they have already started. But so there's some different rules for divorcing. So if your spouse is still alive and collecting, you can still collect on theirs? Correct. That is correct. I so this, this yeah. works, especially if there's an age difference between the spouses. You have an older spouse who starts mm -hmm. collecting um, theirs at 66, and then you can get half of what, when, and say you're 62. Mm -hmm. So at 62, you start collecting half of what he, uh, your spouse is getting. He's still getting his whole amount and you're getting right. half of that. So it's not affecting his his income coming in, it just affects what you can get. So even though you're starting to collect at an earlier age, you still get half of his higher oh, rate? You, you have to collect the 66 too, right? Right, right. actually okay. to get, so to to get half 66. of his, okay. you would have to be at 66. Okay. But you could start once, he, he, we're assuming husband and wife here, but mm -hmm. it could be the other way around. Um, so if your husband does start collecting at 66 and you're 62, you could collect on a percentage of his, it, but it would be reduced, similar okay. to what we talked about before. So at age 66, you would get exactly half. So you would get 50%, but if you started collecting at 62, 63, 64, there would so be a reduction. So you only get the percentage that he would have got had, had he started at 62? It's a little bit different. The formula is about 20%. Okay. Yeah. So let's say I've divorced and I have never remarried and now I'm 66. Can I collect on a husband that I was previously married to? Yes, and that's such a good Good lead-in for me. So divorce has a couple of different rules. So number one, the main thing that you have to remember in a divorce is that you have to have been married for 10 years to that spouse to have any possibility of collecting on what that spouse might have, um, have for a benefit. So if you're so at year nine, you should wait a year? That's yes. right. Yes. If, you're at nine, if you're at nine, <laughs> nine and a half, you wait until, <laughs> until it's been 10 years. Absolutely. Some, some divorces do take two years and might get you over that point, but you really, it's, it's when mm -hmm. the divorce is final is, is, is the date that they use. So it's got to be at least 10 years. So that's number one, prime, prime. And, so, and this is really good in a situation where uh, the one spouse, and we'll use... Uh, the women at this time, but not necessarily is, but in my generation, women didn't work, they stayed home, they, they didn't have, they weren't building on their social security, they may have had part-time jobs, and so now they're divorced, uh, the husband has gone up in his career, and no longer, they're no longer on the same page, and so he's gone, so, so she really doesn't have much in her social security bank. So, if she were to retire, 
and based on her social security, and let's give an example that um, John is married to Mary, mm -hmm. and Mary uh, didn't work, didn't ha or uh, very little, she did part-time jobs, she would get $600 a month. Now, $600 a month is not very much to collect in social security. John's gonna get $2,000 a month in social security. So, so Susan can choose when she reaches 66, to choose. You married Susan too? I thought you were oh. talking about Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan came I'm later. I'm sorry. Okay. Susan comes later. So, so John, doesn't matter if he remarries or not. He was married to Mary. Oh, that wasn't a good name. Married to Mary for 10 years. Mary goes to retire. John's already retired. So she can collect $1,000, half of his. $1,000 is more than her 600 She doesn't get both. She doesn't, doesn't combine, but she can get the $1,000, which is more. And she gets that for the rest, and nothing has happened to John. So John still is yeah. collecting his 2000 He's still collecting his 2000 It doesn't affect what he well, takes Well, now, home. John really is not a, such a great husband. Be well, he is because he likes to get married. <laughs> so John married Susan. Okay, <laughs> here comes Susan. Susan. So John married Susan. Susan, again, uh, stayed with him, basically, uh, mostly stay at home, part-time jobs, not very much, because that's the kind of uh, person he needed to have take care of him. So Susan, again, her, hers might be $700, say, her, her, hers is 700 Married 10 years, John got divorced after 10 years, John's on his own again, looking at someone else. John got married again, but Susan can also claim the $1,000. So you've got Mary collecting a thousand, Susan, Susan collecting a thousand, and John and can still collect two thousand. Right. And if he gets married a third time, and maybe he's going to stay with that one, then they can do the other rules, or the, if they <laughs> for divorce for for married couples. So lots of options out there for um, for a divorce. So it is important in the divorce so that you. Number one, Social Security is not negotiable. It's not part of your negotiation at all in a divorce. It's just what's available with the Social, Social Security service. So you don't have to you know, call him and say, can I have half of yours? And, and no, it doesn't affect him. He is not going to get affected by what his Social Security is. It's just a matter of half of his is more than all of yours. And then you take the higher amount. Well, that's great. And am I correct too, um, Freda, is it that they don't even have to know. The other spouse doesn't even have to know that Does you're collecting on theirs. So it doesn't So when you go to way. file, what do you have to bring? Do you have to bring proof of marriage, proof of divorce, yep. their social security number, and all that information? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Hmm. And then, can you talk about the um, survivor's benefits? Sure, survivor's benefits are a little bit different. You actually can start collecting survivor benefit at 60, as opposed to 62 that we've been talking about. And um, if you wait till your full retirement age, again, everything goes back to that full retirement age of 66, you would collect the full amount of your deceased spouse's benefit. So you can collect on your deceased spouse at as early as age 60. You can also switch over to yours. So let's say that um, you collect on your deceased spouses, but they're both um, close in amount. Mm -hmm and you want to wait till 70 to start yours, you would have that option and let yours continue to grow at that 8%. So from 62 to 70 then, I could collect on John's if he happens to be my deceased husband. And then when I turn 70, I can collect on my own. As for a survivor, we're talking about okay. survivor, yes. Okay, interesting. And here's another one. So what if you had four husbands yourself, or three husbands yourself, <laughs> and you were married, and uh, I don't know if I have that much energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first, so and you're working yourself, and you and you're making a, you know, you're, you're getting a good benefit. You're retired, and your retirement is higher than your first husband, and your second husband, and your third husband. So you're collecting on your own, but your first husband dies, and all of a sudden that survivor benefit is higher than your benefit. You can now get the survivor benefit on that first husband, even though he's not your present husband. Wow. I didn't know any of this. Did you, Carlene? I did not. No. This was great. Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us today here at the WBOA, Learning from the Experts. And thank you for Susan Allen of Susan Allen Financial and Freda Brown, Divorce Financial Services, for coming to join us. If you'd like to learn more about their services 
or about WBOA, please visit us at www.wboa.org. Have a great day. Thank you.